Hello guys, welcome to Wonderbird High School Virtual Open House. My name is Derek Maxwell and I have the pleasure of serving as your principal. Um, just so everyone is, is well aware, this is not how or the way in which to hold this open house. We were looking forward to seeing you guys' live faces on August 17th for all the students who signed up for face-to-face -face learning and looking forward to working with our virtual learners as well. Again, on August 17th, it looks like we will all begin this year virtually. Um, depending on how you feel about that, I know there's a lot of mixed emotions in the community and mixed emotions amongst our staff and even mixed emotions amongst my household. But for now, the decision has been made and I think it's best if we all just move forward with things um, and control the things we, that we can control. So we worked hard today. I think you, um, you'll see uh, as you continue on this virtual journey that a lot of your teachers have posted a lot of videos of themselves and their classroom expectations and how to join their Google Classroom code. We ask them to have a good time with it and we hope that you will get to know us on a personal level even though that we must interact in this virtual environment. Um, a couple of things that are markedly different from this upcoming virtual experience as to what you might experience in the spring. We're going to be holding students and teachers and ourselves as, as administrators a lot more accountable for the learning that takes place. It's going to look a little different. It's going to feel a little different. Uh, we've had more time to prepare. Um, things are going to have to be turned in, turned in on time, assessed and returned to you in a timely manner. So there's accountability that's happening on all levels, but we're going to make the best out of it. We don't have the playbook for this. We're not immediately experts on this. So we would ask for a little grace as we work hard to figure this out. So we'll extend that same grace to you, but we're all here to learn. That's what we do. So um, whether it's virtual or we return to face to face in one week, two weeks, three weeks, six weeks, we're going to do the best we can while we can uh, to, to make sure that you have a good experience. Uh, I'm available for questions. Shoot me an email. We're posting regular videos through this channel. So like, subscribe, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have joined all your teachers Google Classroom codes as of now uh, at, at the end of this virtual experience. Uh, coming up, we've got some online tips from Ms. Stewart about how to manage your time at home. Um, it's, it's, it's beneficial if you set a schedule and stick to it and make sure you build in time to reward yourself. Some more coming up. Also, the counselors are gonna give you some information. They wanna make sure that you have access to the same level of resources in the building as you, you wanna make sure you have the same level of access virtually as you would in the building. Uh, if you need anything, let us know. We're here for you, and we look forward to a great year, no matter what it looks like. Thank you, guys. Hey, y'all. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Miss Stewart, and I'm here to provide you with some tips for distance learning. I know that many of you may have struggled with transitioning from in-person learning to online learning last spring, and I want to help you create a better experience with learning virtually this fall. So, here are my tips. Number one, create a study or workspace for yourself somewhere in your home. Find a spot in your home that you can dedicate only to doing schoolwork. This shouldn't be your bed, and ideally it shouldn't even be in your bedroom. This spot could be at a kitchen table, a desk in an office, or even a table outside. Just find a spot that you can use, clear it off of any clutter, and then make it feel like it's a place you can do work. For example, I use the coffee table in my living room to do my work. Number two, eliminate distractions. When you get ready to do your work for the day, do yourself a favor and eliminate anything that will distract you from your work. Put your phone on silent or even on airplane mode. Close the doors, turn off the television. I know you can't stop your pets and your siblings from distracting you, but do what you can to give yourself the space to really focus on your schoolwork. Number three, set daily goals and manage your time. Calendars are your friend. Use a calendar or a planner to set goals for yourself. What time of day are you most productive? Do you work better early in the morning or late at night? Block off at least 90 minutes for each of your classes and then dedicate that time to work only on that subject. Number four, take breaks. You heard me right, I want you to take breaks every day. Lots of them, in fact. It's not possible or productive to sit down at your workspace with no distractions and work nonstop for six straight hours. Just like when you're reading a novel, you can't sit down and read the whole thing in one go. You have to break your work up into manageable chunks or you'll lose your ability to focus. 
20 to 30 minutes is a good amount of time to really concentrate on your work before you need to take a little brain break. So use technology to enforce those breaks. Set a timer on your phone for every 30 minutes or so, and when that timer goes off, step away from your work area. Take a quick walk around the block, play with your siblings or your pets, uh, grab a snack or text a friend. Do something that makes you happy and ideally that gets you out of your seat for a few minutes before you go back to work. Number five, ask for help. If you don't understand something your teacher has assigned, distance learning is the best format to get more help. I know some people don't like asking questions in class for lots of reasons, but when you're learning online, it is so easy to send your teacher an email and ask them to clarify something for you. Every teacher at WBHS will be available to help their students every single school day through either email, Remind, or Google Meets. Take advantage of that and advocate for yourself. Your teachers want you to succeed, so all you have to do is ask for help when you need it. I hope these tips will help you guys have a successful virtual start to the school year. I know it's not ideal, and I really can't wait until I can see your faces again in the halls, but until we can safely return, please let these tips guide you to make the most of your distance learning experience. Bye. Hey everybody, this is Mr. Peppers, and I have students' last names A through E, and that stretches all the way through the alphabet. So that's new this year, so just kind of pay attention to those breakdowns. Um, what I wanted to let you know as well for this year that's new is that Miss Tilly, the first, first person that you see when you walk into our office, she will actually be handling all records for students. So if you need a transcript, official or unofficial, you can make that request through her. If you need things for your auto discounts, social security paperwork, um, different records requests, or even withdrawals, they can all be made online if you email her. We have a make an appointment tab so you can see all those functions for this school year. So if you visit the counseling website, you can request those things for her. As well, just an important reminder, if you um, feel that you're in any danger, um, have any concerns for your safety, you can still make reports to us, your counselor, um, to kind of get ass assistance or help out with your situation. So that includes anything with physical or sexual abuse, um, neglect, or just anything that concerns your safety or the safety of others. So we would like for you to just, you know, reach out to us if those things happen. Um, also, if you are in need of food items or clothing or supplies, those types of things, we can still work with you to help um, get everything that you need for the school year and get you connected to possibly our social worker um, who will be looking out to, to kind of help out any Winder Barrett students for the school year. The preferred way for contact for that is going to be through our email accounts, and that's the our name, so mine would be Corey.peppers at barrow.k12.ga.us, for instance. Um, you could also, once the school year begins, make appointments, and then we'll just contact you directly when your appointment is, and we'll work from there. And then hopefully when we get back into the school year, we'll get um, back to the normal way of things, and we'll just make appointments, and you'll be here in our office. So hope you all have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Hi, Wonder Barrow. My name is Angela Bruce, and I am the new counselor here this year. Um, I will be working with students whose last names start with the letters F through K. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the services that we offer in terms of post-secondary planning. Um, one of the things that will be a little different this year is that we will be conducting what we call senior meetings. Um, we know that not everyone had a chance to do their junior meeting in the spring because of the virus. And so we will be prioritizing senior meetings in the fall to make sure that students have the tools that they need for planning for whatever the next step will be, whether that's college or the military or workforce or gap year or whatever. Um, so part of that is also um, talking about the SAT and the ACT. Um, if you qualify for free or reduced lunch, you are also eligible for a fee waiver for those exams. Um, we'll help you with scholarships, financial aid, the FAFSA. Um, if you're in 10th grade, you'll have the opportunity to take the PSAT this year for free. That will be funded through the state. Um, we will 
work to make sure we get the ASVAB scheduled. The ASVAB is a military entrance exam for students who are interested in going into the military. And then we'll work with you who, if you're interested in dual enrollment. Dual enrollment is um, an opportunity that allows students to take college level classes during high school and earn high school and college credit at the same time. It's a great deal um, for the right student. It's not for everybody, but it's a, it is a good opportunity. Ms. Long um, is the person who gets this started, this process started, and then uh, we'll work with students once they're accepted to make sure that you get the classes that you need to meet graduation requirements and classes that make sense moving forward. So um, I wanted to say that I'm excited to be at Winder Barrow this year and I'm really excited to meet everyone. So looking forward to it. I hope you all have a great year. Hey everyone, my name is Miss Watson. I used to be the ninth grade counselor here at Winder Barrow High School, but now I serve all grades, ninth through 12th grade for students with the last names L through Q. So one role that school counselors do at Winder Barrow is academic counseling and planning. If you need to connect with a teacher, just contact us and we can set that up. We can discuss academic progress, graduation requirements, and GPA throughout the school year, but we will be focusing on junior meetings in the spring. When possible, we will conduct virtual meetings as necessary. Hey y'all, my name is Ms. Nelson and I am the school counselor for all students with last names R through Z. One of our roles as school counselors is to ensure that you feel supported in your mental health. This change of pace will affect us all in different ways, but no matter how you're feeling, we want you to know that the counselors are here for you. While we are virtual, we will be available through phone or email, so please feel free to reach out, check in, or just reconnect with us. We have a variety of mental health resources and community connections to ensure that you have access to counseling, food, clothing, internet, and other necessities. So you will be given an Edmentum login username and password or a clever login or username and password. So once you enter in all that information, you will click log in. It will give you a list of all of your assignments and all the classes that you have for Edmentum. So you can pick a course. So I'm gonna do the course principles of business for this test student. And then to see what I need to do, I go to all activities. It tells me right now the percentage that I have completed. And then once in there, you can click the Plato Student Orientation. That kind of gives you a rundown of how to use the program. The syllabus um, can be in there as well. I would click Unit 1. And then these are all the things that I need to do. My pretest, I would take my pretest. The more that I get correct, the better chance I have at exempting some of the assignments throughout the program. Um, once I complete those, it'll prompt me to take a post test. When I get an 80 on the post test, then I would be able to go on to the next section. Once you go there, so going back home, you can see all your courses. If you want to check a report, so parents, this is great for you. If you would like to see how your student's progress is going, you would click on the All My Work. Once there, I would go down so it has the percentage. It kind of tells you like when you start, when it was accessed, so you can see that as well you go to create um, the create portfolio report and then that kind of tells you the summary of what your student has done so the total activities that are assigned the percentage of complete this kind of breaks it down in a table as well and then also in all my work you have the option under each course to click create a progress report and then that kind of breaks it down as well. So what was mastered, when was it completed, how many attempts, and the first date that was used, the last date it was used, and how long was spent on, on task. Um, so this is a great resource for parents and students as well. So that's about it. Thank you.